Hello, welcome to the Comptorx module. Today, in our fourth video of the series, we'll be discussing combinations. They enumerate the possibilities in selecting objects from a list when the order of the selected objects does not matter. This differs from the concept of permutations in the previous section because in permutations, the order of the selected object does matter. For example, if we are counting the number of possible poker hands, then the order of the cards in the hand does not matter. Therefore, we'd want to use combinations instead of permutations. Let's say we have the integers from 1 through 10, and we want to select three of them. One possibility is 7, 2, 8. Another possibility is 5, 7, 9. Note that if we count 5, 7, 9 as a possibility, then we can't count 9, 7, 5 as a possibility. Doing so would result in a problem called overcounting, where we count each possibility multiple times, resulting in a final count that is incorrect. All right, we're finally ready to tackle a problem. Suppose we have three letters, A, B, C, and we want to select two of them. We can just list out all the possibilities and see that there are three ways of doing so. But let's use the techniques of the previous section and see how far we get. So we have two slots for three letters. The first slot has three possibilities, and the second slot has two possibilities which means by the rule of product, we have three times two equals six possibilities in total. However, we know we are overcounting since we have completely ignored the fact that we have counted for any of the duplicates, such as AB and BA in the first column. How much are we overcounting by? We notice that we've counted each possibility twice. Therefore, we divide our count by two to get six divided by two equals three possibilities in total which is what we initially counted. All right, let's recap the strategy we just used. First, we counted the number of overall possibilities. Then we accounted for overcounting, saw how many times we overcounted each possibility, and then divided our initial count by this number. So let's take a look at the general case. Suppose we have n objects in total, and we want to select a subset of k objects. From the permutations lessons, we know there are n factorial divided by n minus k factorial possibilities if the order of the objects matter. The question is, how many times did we overcount each of the possibilities? Well, each possibility has k objects. So the number of ways we can rearrange the k objects is k factorial. Therefore, we've overcounted each possibility by k factorial times. So we take the overall number of possibilities and divide it by k factorial to get the actual count. Thus, we have n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, k factorial. Now we'll take this time to introduce the binomial coefficient, pronounced n choose k, where the name comes from the concept of choosing k objects from a set of n objects. So n choose k equals n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, k factorial, and also equals the number of ways to choose k objects from a set of n objects. That is the idea of combinations.